right, Alan, we've hit the live button. That means we're recording this webinar. So before the questions start filing in, because this happens every time we do one of these, <laughs> we are recording. It will be provided. Um, it'll go on to integratelive.com. If you're uh, on this, you'll get a email that tells you that you uh, where the recording is, all that good stuff, I promise. Alan, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. I really am. I'm doing good. I think that uh, I'm excited to, to kind of really get an understanding of what is this collaboration is is really going to uh, to look like and really how it's going to begin to transform into real value. Right. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the webinar. I'm doing good. Um, I did. You know, I started a new job. Um, I got a job as a security officer. Yeah. And supervisor told me to uh, watch the office and uh, um, I'm doing pretty well. I'm on season eight. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. I was going to ask you how the bouncer gig has been going lately. <laughs> uh, if you've been checking badges and making sure everybody has their uh, IDs. I got tired of watching the office. So I ended up watching a, a documentary on marijuana and turns out it's the best way to watch a documentary. <laughs> 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 oh well done that was the best documentary ever <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember much of it but it was i know it was good good it was good if you've never been on an integrate live webinar or session before and this is your first time welcome you might be wondering why we're telling jokes that's kind of what we do as a community here at integrate live we always try to filter a couple dad jokes in um Hey, on a serious note, Alan, um, be thinking about my wife and I. We've decided we made a personal decision. We decided we don't want to have kids. Um, have you told them yet? Our kids are taking it really hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's introduce our guest. And I don't want to waste too much time because we have a lot to cover today. Um, today, we're joined by a gentleman from Dell, from Intel, from Walker, from Kepware, probably also from Insight, as soon as, uh, as, soon as Ben uh, works out his technical details. Um, we've got Jeff Diamond from Dell. Jeff is the CTO of Manufacturing. Welcome, Jeff. Glad to have you here today. Glad to be here. We're joined by Ricky Watts from Intel. Ricky serves as our Senior Director of Industrial Solutions. Welcome, Ricky. Yeah, also, very pleased to be here and uh, look forward to the conversation today. Great. Awesome. Glad to have you. Uh, Ross Turpin, who's our Industrial Engineering Manager over at Wachter. Hey, Ross. How's it going, guys? Happy to be here. And Ross wins for the most manly backdrop of the group. <laughs> and I don't know how it's amazing how you're laying on your back with your phone levitating above you. I'm going to get tired. <laughs> and uh, Steve Sponseller, uh, Steve serves as the director of channel and business development over at Kepware. Hey, Steve. Hello. Hey, can I, uh, I, I um, and this is not a, a joke. I was actually uh, fortunate enough to be fishing in Casco Bay this morning. Um, you know, the Kepler office is located in downtown Portland, Maine. And um, have you heard the story about the one-armed fisherman? No. He, he caught a fish this big. <laughs> that was a visual one, a little different. <laughs> That's good. And uh, good news, Ben has joined the call. So we're going <laughs> to. But he left his office. <laughs> <laughs> but he's disappeared. So there he and, is. He's <laughs> and he's changed names. So <laughs> the invisible man. Right, man. Kick us off, sir. What did you have for uh some analytics and thoughts on uh insight? Sorry, I missed the intro to that. It's a little bit of chaos right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good. Hey, we're glad that you we've glad we're glad that you made it. Um, ben had a, uh, a call that ran long, but he's here. He's named properly. Steve, take it away for us. Share your screen and kick us off. All right. Hey. Let me Thanks. do that. Make sure I share the right one. Let me know if you see a nice blue uh, screen, PowerPoint. Let me get some stuff out of it. Yeah. Can you see it? 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, first of all, foremost, uh, hello, Integrate Live community. Um, thank you for your time and attention today, and uh, special thanks to Jeff and Alan for having us. Um, like we said at the beginning, I'm Steve Sponseller from the Kepware team, and we have a panel discussion today, um, which uh, should be helpful in keeping this a lively discussion. We're, we're off to a great start as far as that goes, and keeping everyone awake and uh, paying attention. I realize this is after lunch for some of us. Um, in that this is a Kepware related topic, uh, we are going to be discussing industrial connectivity today. Um, you know, essentially an enterprise wide scalable approach through an industry coalition uh, made up of these partners uh, that are joining us today on this call. And if you don't know what I mean when I say industrial connectivity, uh, especially in regards to, to Kepware and what we all do here in this group, I'm talking about translating and pulling data off of machines um, and automation equipment on the factory floor or at the work site and making it accessible and usable across uh, your entire enterprise. Um, all right, so uh, we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper into what each of the partners here joining us um, brings to the table. But first, um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, more about industrial connectivity and how it's related to digital transformation. So Ricky, I'm gonna start with you to step us through some of the benefits of digital transformation. Yeah, Hopefully the uh, slide advanced. Yeah, I can see it. Th thanks, Steve. And uh, again, happy to be here and an opportunity to work with a, a great bunch of people, by the way, as well, as we're doing this. And, you know, I, I think it kind of captured a little bit there, Steve. I mean, you know, there's so much going on out there right now um, at the edge and in the industrial edge, you know, and we talk about data and connectivity. You know, there's this thing called AI, artificial intelligence, chat GPT. I mean, how much technology is out there at the moment that's impacting what we do on a day to day basis? And really, how we, what are we trying to do? We're trying to transform the way that we work, you know, and the, through the data that we're going to access. You know, and there's a few things that you can see uh, the, the call outs here converging IT and OT, for example. I mean, traditionally, IT systems have been very much separated from OT systems. OT are the systems that are running, you know, the factories. They're creating the output, the goods that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. And because of the sensitivity of those applications, you keep them separate. But we want to connect in there. We want to get access to that data. And we want to do it in a flexible and meaningful way. So converging IT and OT in, this, uh, in terms of what we're doing here is really important because it gives a lot of benefits in terms of how we want to present that data out. So accurately connecting and getting access to that data, making sure that it's presentable into the systems that are going to go and use that data and get accurate, meaningful output. So that gives us a lot of benefits that we can start to do in terms of reducing costs, bringing in new systems and new capabilities. There's so many things that we can do when we get access to these systems and these data that are going to transform manufacturing and transform the way that we work, you know, in, in just to so many different areas as we go forward. And again, I think that goes with the, uh, the rise of AI and data that comes into that as well. So, you know, just new processes, new ways to integrate, you know, just think of this data explosion that you're going to see coming at the edge when we do these things. And, you know, this coalition that we're building here and the partnerships that we're doing really are going to create those foundational things. I, I, I have a saying, and I'm really keen on this, is, you know, and I, from my experience doing this before, you've got to do this in the right way. You've got to get access to that data and you've got to present it in the right way because if you get garbage out, that's what you're going to translate up. So you want the best companies providing the best solutions, creating that environment, creating those new customer experiences, those new outputs, reducing costs, creating better outcomes from the, the data and how we use it. So, you know, the partnership is a foundation to do that. It really is going to transform industry and manufacturing. And the guys are going to walk you through some of the uh, the benefits of that we're going to go through. So, Steve, back to you. All right, cool. Thank you, Ricky. Um, so, sign me up. Uh, this all seems like a, a no-brainer opportunity, all these great things we can do. Um, Ross, why isn't everybody already doing all this fantastic money saving and better customer experience initiatives? And I'll advance the slide. No, I'm already there. You already did. Yeah. Um, it, no, it sounds like a great story, doesn't it? Um, yeah. 
but we know that it really isn't that easy when you know these all these systems are in silos how do we break down those silos um every factory has all these disparate systems spread across their entire factory islands of automation as some people call them how do we talk how do we get the data from all those different systems how do we pull them all together how do we make that data common and usable across all those systems um really you have to start at the machine level of uh, how do we get these machines to talk to each other and make them pull data across the entire industrial platform to get up to the top layer the you know problem comes if one factory is difficult enough what if you've got a hundred factories it you know it becomes an astronomical problem and this is and people just don't even know where to start that's where it doesn't move everybody looks at it and you're like oh i'm gonna need tens of thousands of connectors, um, there's no reason to even start. Well, the real solution starts by building a new environment of inoperability so that higher level applications can get standardized, available data, giving better insight across the entirety of the systems and allowing for command and control of an organization, not necessarily making everything match. It's making all those disparate systems talk to each other is the solution. It starts from the problem. Great, thank you. Um... So uh, as I was kind of speaking to at the beginning, there, there is uh, all this invaluable operational data from the shop floor that today is just being used for, um, you know, more like what, what we kind of call local project-based purposes, like, you know, like, like for instance, Kepware was installed so that an operator uh, can interface with a machine or that a plant manager, um, you know, is running some metrics about his factory and he needed to get data from the machines, but still, you know, within like the OT network. Um, you know, Jeff, uh, can you speak to the value of this data if it was unlocked and made available and easily accessible across the entire enterprise? Sure, Steve, thanks. So you know, we all know that the operational data to control the process, right? Keep the process in its constraints, making the products, but how do I do some business insight using that data? And that's really where we found out, you know, especially in this past uh, geopolitical climate and pandemics where we had stresses on the supply chain. I need to know information about things where my raw materials are coming from. Are they going to be late? Is my quality correct? Is my logistics of getting my product to the customer uh, right? Is it now a train versus a truck? Those type of things. So using that, that operational data and make it more accessible to make business decisions is really what we're talking about when we say edge solutions. We've got to get that data related to another piece of data. It might even be from the ERP system, uh, might be diagnostics off the machines, but to understand where we are, the position we are in plan versus actual of our production plan, uh, understanding what of our our quality first pass yields, our energy yields for that matter, what's our carbon footprint, all of that data up from the process control data is something fairly new, but it's the, the hard part has always been how to get that data, right? There's older systems out there speaking older protocols uh, on different types of electrical medium like RS-232, and uh, now up to OPC UA on 5G. Is, so the methods of getting that data, but really it's there to provide business insight for manufacturers to understand that they can be agile with their production, agile uh, in getting their product to the customer, uh, agile about buying their raw materials, uh, the list goes on. So the use cases of getting that data, put those together along with workflow and orchestration from the employees uh, and the systems that they have are what we see happening. It's been happening for a while. I think we're making it easier, especially with this coalition. We have all the parts covered for uh, those solutions to be by, to be provided. So go ahead, Steve. Back to you. Yes, yeah, sweet. I, I love your use of the word agile because you know all this stuff. You know, companies have been doing all along to some degree, but like how. You know how easily were they able to do it or how agile were they able to do it whereas now you you know you bring that data to their fingertips and they're, they're able to you know, make these decisions a lot quicker um all right so we've covered the the benefits of digital transformation uh thanks to ricky and some of the challenges uh with obtaining and managing the data from a the shop floor across the enterprise 
Uh, thanks to Ross. Um, let's start talking about you know what this coalition, like you just mentioned, um, of companies that have come together to accomplish to solve these challenges. Uh, ben, can you give us a broad overview of this combined offering and the benefits of this approach? Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. So what we find is that you know, we work with a lot of clients all over the world with a, a common problem. They have uh, manufacturing systems that they need to get connected from their PLCs to their uh, Kepware instances, or they need to figure out how to make some meaningful or get some meaningful insights from the data that they have. What they don't really understand is all the pieces of the puzzle to make all of that happen. And so what's powerful about this coalition, as you can see, industry experts and, and industry leading organizations like Intel, Kepware, Insight, Dell, and Wachter are here to really make it a turnkey experience. So if someone comes to us with a problem, we can come to the table with these experts and say, hey, you've got, you you don't know how to get that meaningful in, information from your systems and help you make better decisions and predict better outcomes. But we can help you by coming to the table with the partners that are there to really turn the right switches, connect the right uh, dots and make everything come together and come to life. And so we we kind of come to the table and say, hey, what what, what kind of outcomes are you looking for? How can we help you achieve those outcomes by bringing in the members of this coalition? So when I talk to folks all the time, they have uh, they have uh, PLCs of varying different uh, ages that are in, in their manufacturing floor, and they know that they've collected data in historians for years and years and years, but they just don't really know what to do with it. And they don't know how to use that to create better outcomes and, and better uh, make, help, help make better decisions, help manage their staff better, help make maintenance routines more efficient. They don't know how to do any of that. And so what what and they and frankly they don't even know how to connect uh, some of the network pieces at the at the very edge of the OT network and so there this 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 kind of problem has so is so broad and it has so many pieces i think this is one of these kind of forest through the trees types of scenarios where folks just don't really understand all the pieces to put together to make better decisions and so uh, what we'll see is people will just throw data into a database somewhere in like a structured database and as this data grows, they get tons of information and then they get a lot of deadlocks because that's not the right way to do it, but they don't know. And they wanna get something in a report and the reporting tool needs SQL. And so that's just what they do because that's what they know how to do. But it's really not a strategy, it's just a short term way of visualizing some information. And so uh, what we wanna do is really give people uh, the, the, the right uh, kind of best of read approaches to these so that they get to the outcomes that they're looking for without making a lot of mistakes, without getting deadlocks in their databases and without uh, open up, opening up security holes. And so with Wachter, we can really come to the table and, and provide very little disruption. And, and of course with Dell, we have best of breed hardware, uh, including Intel with, with the Intel hardware that's part of that. And then Kepler being a great software solution for uh, connecting to those PLCs and, and getting information from them and translating those protocols. Wow. Really well said, Ben. Um, you know, I hope we didn't scare anyone off by um, you know talking about all the challenges that that um, companies can come across that are well intentioned and everything. Um, but uh, there there just is a lot to consider. Um, okay, so um, we've we've talked a little bit about the the um, you know the the challenges, the benefits, um, how these companies are are coming together. Um, we're going to dive. Just one slide per company. Well, actually, kept where I have two, but everyone else has one. Um, in case you didn't know, like what these companies do. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to the the Kepware, um, related slide, assuming it's gonna advance for me. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So this uh, graphic depicts, um, you know, some of the challenges with trying to get data from various machines uh, or work cells. Um, spread across, um, you know, just just one factory, and then if you multiply that against n number of factories, um, just the real mess that you have with trying to get that data that would be at like level zero, level one. Um, so in in the past, traditionally, you know, you would have these each individual applications like your SCADA application or your historian or um, quality system ERP, what have you each trying to access the data directly from, from each of those machines. Um, and that's what you see there with all those crisscross dotted lines. 
Um, that means that each one of those applications has to uh, take the time to understand protocols and write, again, what I call drivers in order to, to get data from each one of those uh, machines. Uh, they have to maintain that. Uh, and then you know, each individual application hitting those machines uh, and getting data, there's, there's not really one single source of truth. Um, and then you know, people in the IT organization are, are writing APIs um, as a way to uh, try and get that data out of those applications and into you know, more of the enterprise, into the cloud, however you want to frame it. Um, but that's, you know, those applications just weren't natively built to, uh, to do that. Um, and this is pretty exciting timing because we, we just had the uh, person here at Kepware go into the device room to do some work. Um, so this kind of gives you, uh, uh, I don't know how well you can actually see it, but like a, an idea of like all these different PLCs and, and, and pieces of automation equipment, what they look like and how different they are, all these different brands. It would be great if each factory had just one vendor of, of automation equipment and then there wouldn't be a need for, for Kepware, but thankfully that's never the case. There's, there's always um, many different types of, of pieces of hardware that, uh, that you need to get data from. All right, so uh, enough of the challenges there. So what Ke where Kepware comes in as a layer, you know, right around level one, kind of sometimes above or below that, but essentially we're a layer, I mentioned before, you know, we write drivers in order to communicate and uh, connect to these pieces of equipment and then as requested by applications above us, we are able to uh, acquire that data and format it in a way that these applications can easily uh, understand it, you know, acquire it and understand it. Um, I meant to say ingest. Um, so we do this based on standards, you know, OPC UA, like Jeff mentioned, is a, you know, traditional standard that Kepware has played in. You know, we are usually considered an OPC server, um, but with the high, uh, invent of IoT, uh, and this digital transformation, um, IT, OT bridging, and we also are able to provide that data um, through uh, methods like MQTT or RESTful interface or dump it directly into a database um, like Ben was mentioning. So, so Kepware, I kind of call it like the Swiss army knife. We have all these different drivers below us, um, you know, 150 uh, odd, so a number of drivers to communicate to all these different types of devices. And then, and then all these ways of interfacing for applications above us. Um, and of course, doing this all in a secure fashion. All right, thank you for listening about Kepware in case anyone wasn't already familiar with it. Um, Dell, I'm, I'm sure everyone knows, you know, has heard of Dell, a typical household name, but uh, Jeff, do you wanna give us some insight as to you know, everything that Dell brings to the table in an in a opportunity like this? Sure. So the first thing I want to talk about is when you talk about edge and, and the, the architecture that you might have from the plant floor uh, to the cloud, there's all types of edges. Uh, matter of fact, there's even uh, one called cloud edge, which to me sounds like jumbo shrimp. But generally, there is some device that's out there that's connected to your control systems, maybe some IoT devices like acoustic or vibration that's not intrusive to the device. But one of the things you have to think about is all those protocols that you think that, that Steve just mentioned, how do we get that data into a box and, and switched over to a common protocol that everything understands? Maybe it's MQTT, maybe it's OPC UA, and that's what our gateways have. And we call those far edge, industrial edge, thin edge. There's not an industry standard of calling what's that compute device that's out there close to the process that's gathering that information with software running on it like Kepware. So we have from an ARM device all the way up to a multi-core i7 uh, uh, multi-processor device that runs a myriad of different uh, protocols, including obviously Microsoft, Ubuntu, Yocto, and so forth. So that data coming back through our devices from that far edge, if you will, can come back uh, via fiber, uh, ethernet, uh, 5G even. So on this picture, we're, we're showing a big ethernet switch in the middle up to a device. And we usually find that most of our customers are, uh, they eventually get to uh, a hypercompute infrastructure. So an HCI infrastructure where we spin up multiple virtual machines to run the use cases 
on them is normally what happens, and that's part of our validated design. And then, of course, sending it up to the cloud, to the data center, understanding when you put this, the models together, for instance, if you're doing AI, ML, especially computer vision, you may create the model in the cloud, but you're going to execute it on the edge in one of these devices. So you'll see our VX rails, our gateways, all part of this infrastructure. And one of the things I talk to our customers about, and I'm sure the Insight guys do too, is that, you know, give us some storage and compute. You can start small and grow uh, something that you can live with and grow with. And this architecture is scalable. It's repeatable from plant to plant and it's secure. Back to you, Steve. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. I'm sure that's a lot more than people realize that what Dell brings to the table. Thank you for that, Jeff. Um, come on, advance. Nope. Here we go. Uh, Ross, I'd like to think, I like to think of Wachter as our boots on the ground, uh, troops. Can you, can you give us a, can you fill us in on all the specialties you guys bring to the table? Absolutely. We, um, pride ourselves in being, um, top to bottom OT experts, um, whether that be all the way from design and implementation and solutions on the engineering level, we also provide the manpower to install and wire and all of this stuff with these solutions. We have data techs and electricians spread across the entire country um, that go with our engineering team to implement the systems that we design. Uh, that's one of the things that sets us apart from almost everybody is that just the sheer manpower that we can and the expertise of guys that only work in the OT space. Our uh, techs and electricians are OT only. Um, so people working in plants, that, that's the world they live in. It's not taking somebody that had been wiring houses or an office building the week before. It's always guys that live and breathe this world. Um, we really pride ourselves on taking customer problems and finding unique solutions for that customer, not trying to throw package solutions at them and then um, tying them together to make it work. Uh, we want to be the absolute top to bottom solution provider on the industrial space. And we'd love to work with any customers there are and you know optimize what they currently have and take them into the future. But if it exists in the industrial space, uh, we can probably do it other than mechanical. <laughs> Everything else we handle in-house with W2 employees. Other other than what? Mechanical. Oh, mechanical, we yeah. We don't, gotcha. we don't physically build stuff. Yeah, gotcha. Cool, thank you. Uh, on to Insight, Ben. Uh, as the IT integrator in the group, please uh, expand on everything that Insight brings to the table. So Insight is a company that sells and resells a lot of hardware. I'd say 95% <laughs> out of every dollar is in hardware resale. And so uh, that's where our partnership with Intel and Dell comes in, in handy here, obviously, as, as, along with Wachter and, and Kepware. But in addition to that, I'm part of a piece of the organization that does a lot of com uh, custom uh, innovation and development of systems for a variety of different things. And so we have a team that does uh, you know, database uh, analytics. They capture information and put it in data warehouses so that you can actually visualize those that information in meaningful ways. We have um, in, uh, IT infrastructure that we can support, uh, networking capabilities in the IT space. Um, we can empower users with that, those insights uh, and analytics to uh, with with kind of easy to use dashboards. I, I generally don't think people are looking at dashboards all day to make their decisions, but the information that comes from those dashboards helps them to understand the types of outcomes that they're looking to achieve and whether or not they've actually achieved those. And then with those vis visualizations, we we wouldn't just capture those at um, at one level, but at a various various altitude. So you may have things at, at a really high level from across different uh, pieces, part, physical portions of the organization, maybe a number of different buildings in the enterprise or a number of different factories uh, down to an individual machine. And so that really allowing your, your, you to zoom in at those different levels allows you to get to the outcomes that you're looking for. And then lastly, just having the ability to manage those services long-term Make sure the lights stay on for you, and and everything continues to run uh, as as uh, as as the solution develops and as the solution uh, is used long term. Thank you. Um, before we get to Ricky at Intel, I think I just want to take a moment and um, have Ben and Ross, you know, because 
you know, personally, from a Kepler perspective, I've, I've seen instances where, you know, like a global SI, you know, IT type SI has subcontracted with an OT SI on a specific project. You know, maybe it's a local one that's already familiar with a particular factory and, and then they're dealing with several different OT SIs across the enterprise. What, you know, what can you tell us is different about this proactive partnership approach of an IT and OT integrator? I love it. I can kind of get started. So, so really, I think where, as you can see on this slide, it does a really good job of kind of showing the division of labor. And in the OT space, we have uh, the walker kind of coming to the table with with their in, in, in implementation details of connecting the physical devices to the OT network and then into Kepware uh, that that allows us to do some of the integration that we've talked about on the other end with MQTT or or other like HTTP integrations that allow us to surface that information into some other centralized platform that is easier to secure. It's it's going to be better integrated with the rest of the IT infrastructure and available to the people that are making business decisions and it, it provides good segmentation of the network and the uh, the systems that uh, that aren't, aren't leaking people into the OT network when they don't need to be. Um, I want to make sure I, I don't go into Ross's space too much with my part of the conversation here because we, we always get into our wrestling matches and he always wins when, when we do so I, I got to <laughs> stop doing that but um, on the IT side, I think in general, um, our, our interest is, is really providing the systems, the capabilities, and the expertise to take that information and give them, uh, the, give them the ability to take meaningful actions based on the information that they're receiving from them. And, and that, that takes on a lot of different flavors. And I kind of touched on a little bit on the, on the last slide that I talked to, but there's um, business decisions that are at this point really a lot of guesswork because that information isn't easy to get to. The more we can make these connections and get things from cradle to grave from these systems, the better people can be informed and make decisions that are going to help organizations just frankly be more efficient and make more money. And to kind of tail on to where you know Ben left off there, I think the biggest piece of this is coming to the table with both the IT and the OT side hand in hand. Um, from my experience, normally I get all this stuff up to the middle layer and I hand it off and then a different IT provider that maybe I haven't talked to, maybe I've had some brief conversations with, takes it and I haven't provided them the data that they can create the dashboards they want, create the actionable information that they need. Or from the other direction, they've got a data analytics company that has, has created all this stuff for the end user. And then they say, okay, just give us all this data. Well, that data may not exist. It may not be properly modeled coming in. Um, it may not work properly for what the actual operators on the ground floor are trying to do. With us coming at this together, all parties are part of all conversations. And we provide much more actionable data, much more usable data, um, and a whole more holistic approach across the entire system and not a he said, she said, uh, well, we could have done this if this other guy would have provided more stuff, or that's not how we envisioned this working. With everybody involved from the beginning, you're going to get information that allow you to make decisions that will affect your plant today um, and not be just throwing data for data's sake. Yeah, no, I, I, I really feel like that he said, she said um, aspect to how a project traditionally goes. Um, you know, having, having that kind of taken care of ahead of time is huge. And, and that way the, the customer is not caught, caught in the middle of that kind of fun, fun stuff. All right. We've, everyone's been waiting to hear one more time from Ricky from Intel. Um, last, but certainly not least, as I mentioned before, Intel was the company that had the, the foresight to bring um, these five companies together. Um, certainly it is a household company, um, but Ricky. Uh, please shed some light um, on, on all things that Intel does in this space and, and their approach to the market. Thanks, Steve. I, you were breaking up a little bit, so I hope it's not my no, end. sorry. No, 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 don't, don't worry. Yeah. So, but, you know, you Steve, sound great. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you for that. So, um, you know, and uh, I've been listening intently in the webinar. It's, it's been great to work with you guys. Look, you know, Intel's been providing industrial technologies for many, many years now, you know, supporting systems on IT and OT. 
you know, um, what we're talking about here in terms of this coalition, this partnership is all built around the base. So, you know, providing those technologies, when we talk about operational systems, you've got to make sure that the hardware and the platforms that are running those systems meet with the compliance and security standards. So Windell works in standards. It's bringing the platform technologies to under, underpin this. And then, of course, as a technology provider, you know, not just in terms of what we've been providing through there, but even in our own manufacturing examples as well. I mean, we're a leading manufacturer of silicon, as everybody knows it. So bringing that together, and then it's really, in my mind, and I, I love the pictorial here, you know, this is about bringing partnerships together. And that's what Intel does very well. You know, identifying the best of breed partners in these areas, Kepware, you know, Vokta, Insight, and Dell, coming together to overcome a lot of the challenges that Ross and Ben and yourself talked about, Steve, it's how do you bring that together? Because ultimately, you know, when I go out and I speak to a lot of customers, they have all these challenges. They want, it to, they want to make it simplified. I want to get access to that data. I want it to be reliable and trustworthy. I want to make sure it fits inside my uh, operational environment. So, you know, Intel in the background here, working with these great companies like yourselves, is really making sure that you've got the technology, you've got access to that, and collectively we're building a way of actually scaling this out and simplifying this approach. I truly believe, and I really truly believe, we are on the precipice through what we're doing here of a completely different way of going forward. We know geopolitically how challenging manufacturing is. Everybody's looking at different challenges. How do I be more efficient? Bring this partnership, making sure that people can access this technology, bring this ITOT experience, bring this data experience together. All that data starts at the edge. A lot of it's residing at the edge. It's being connected at the edge and it's being shared from the edge out. So to me, I think what we're seeing here is simplifying, scaling, allowing you know those end customers now, those manufacturers to go out there and truly challenge their own way of working forward. Now, how can I look at what I'm manufacturing, whether it's a widget or a wadget? How can I do that better? How can I be more efficient? And you know, bringing this expertise collectively to come in, bringing it, as I say, from this best of breed technology, I think is a start of a journey that I think many manufacturers are really going to get a lot of benefit from. And then the consumers of those, those products are going to get benefits as well. So great to be involved. Great to see what we're doing here. And Intel being a great part of this, I hope, uh, is really phenomenal for us. And uh, we're very happy and proud to be working with the team here. Yeah, we're, we're very thankful you, you put this team together. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're, we're, we're starting to wrap up here. Um, you know, I'm going to pitch this over to, to the combined, again, Ben and, and Ross, um, to cover some of the high-level steps to the approach that we take. Um, can you add a, anything more to this slide? Sure. <clears throat> so as, as we said, the business outcomes are really the, the key important objectives. And so we need to really understand those and, and discuss those with the client first. And so, you know, sometimes they'll have a, a different um, strategy in their mind than what is appropriate or correct to really get to the outcomes that they're looking for. And so we need to sit down with them and have those conversations, understanding some of their current pain points and those challenges. And then, uh, then we start putting a plan together. Uh, Ross, uh, I'll let you cover step two. I mean, so the basis is we got to come in and figure out where you're at. Um, you know, we start where you're at. Um, it's easy to say we've got this solution and we're just going to parachute it down on top of you. But until we come in and have discussions of what's going to actually benefit you and determine what you currently have in place, um, we'd all love to rip and replace and put brand new systems and everything, but that's not the real world. We all live with real budgets and, um, you know, real confines. So a lot of what you have is very, very usable to pull that data from, but we got to know what it is, figure out what systems are in place, what pieces we need to add to get the data that you really want and the actions that you really want. And then we can build the design from there, uh, but figuring out where the starting point is and the end point, having those conversations in person, looking at your guys' stuff, walking around, seeing how the guys operate on a day-to-day -day basis, see where the weak spots might be, see what the stuff that is really strong in your current facility is, and then move forward from that point. Excellent, excellent. There we go. Anyway. Yeah, the, yeah. The last last piece, just to add on to the end of that, I think is is really creating that blueprint uh, oh, from all of this information that we've 
we've gathered and and based on their current state and the outcomes that they lo- they're looking to achieve, how do we build that journey to help them get there? And, and we want to document that for them and put that plan together and and then help them execute on it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that uh, comes to the uh, conclusion of what we wanted to get out there. Um, you know, we, we gave these panelists an opportunity to, to give their um, perspective um, on a scalable approach to connectivity. Um, but you know, now we want to turn it over to the community. And I do see we have one live question that I, is a great one that, uh, that we'll get to. So, um, you know, if everyone's not aware, there is a Q&A selection up the top. And um, you know, if you have any questions for us, uh, go for it. Um, you know, I do want to say that you know, everyone talks about digital transformation, ITOT, um, all this great stuff. Um, but if you don't have the, the layer of, of uh, industrial connectivity in place, it, it doesn't matter how cool the applications are or how helpful they are. If you don't have the data, it's for naught. Um, and so this, this is kind of a step that a lot of people you know, don't even think of. Um, and, and when they get into it, they, they get stalled, uh, something called uh, pilot purgatory, um, just getting the data in, the, in a sufficient usable way um, is like the biggest challenge of all oftentimes. Um, and that's where this coalition can really, can really help out. Um, uh, so I think the question was actually maybe answered. Um, I think people are typing their, their answer, but the question was, uh, you know, plant managers typically own the budgets for anything going into the plant floor and not always welcoming of IT getting involved. Uh, how are you countering this? Um, and, you know, Jeff, you're the first one to take that uh, and, and type an answer, but do you want to just go ahead and kind of discuss through that for those that might not be reading the, the question and answer? Sure. So that plant manager owns the P&L for that plant, right? He's got to make, <laughs> he's got to make money. And, you know, I'm here from corporate IT doesn't fly a lot of times because it's going to cost that plant manager money to try to put in standards that the corporate IT folks try to say that he has to abide by. But if the solution, and we tell our customers, and I'm sure everybody else on the phone does, is understand that it either makes them money, saves them money, or helps them work safer. And if the use case or those plant solutions out there don't do one of those three things, don't do it. Well, so the plant manager understands business outcome solutions, but who's going to maintain those? And you don't want individual works of art in maintenance and production and operations and even plant the plant because the poor IT department has to maintain them. There is a happy medium. There is standards. One of the things that we we talk about as a coalition here is something that that architecture is scalable, it's secure, it's repeatable. You can put it across your uh, plant. You can put it plant to plant, even country to country. So those kind of things are of interest and everybody understands it. Lowering costs, especially to maintain it, is what everybody's interested in. But also that that ability to roll it out across the world to your entire enterprise is something that helps you lower your costs. I'll, I'll add something here real quick. Uh, so as an end user, right, I, was, I work for a manufacturing company. I work for 3M. And um, one of the things that, that I get a lot of is I get a lot of presentations from vendors who have a solution. And uh, often what happens is that solution is perfect for their edge cases and use cases. And so you you end up trying to get a vendor to fix multiple issues and you're, you you start finding yourself trying to cram a, you know, a square peg in a round hole. What I appreciate about what you guys are doing and the direction you're going is you're not approaching this with a one size fits all. Hey, Dell's got the answer or Insight's got the answer, right? This is a coalition where you're bringing together which really what Integrate Live is all about is why we have vendors come on this and work together is really the, the heart of what we're trying to do is let's talk about the problem and let's get to a solution that is actually going to be scalable, workable, you know, and so I, I appreciate the um, really the, the, the concept and the, the collaboration that you guys are putting together to, to really solve problems and add value. 
And I'll jump in real quick to add one more thing to this before we move on is, I mean, I've spent a huge portion of my career, um, I would call mediating the um, general blood feud between um, plant managers and IT personnel. I mean, I've had multiple plant managers tell me that IT's sole purpose in life is to prevent them from making whatever the hell they're making. Um, <laughs> that is not the case, but it is what they feel like. Um, with coming at it from engineering from the OT perspective, a lot of times we can help frame those conversations to help broker those deals. Because IT wants to keep the system secure, very understandable. OT wants to make whatever they're wanting to make, also very understandable. It's the, they come from different backgrounds and they speak different languages. Um, a lot of times we work as interpreters between those two groups and can help them find a common ground solution that doesn't prevent them from running the plant they want to the way they want to run it, but also finding a very secure way of doing it where updates can be applied in a normal way and where things will work properly. So having somebody come into it that has an understanding of the full stack actually allows for those conversations to take place and corporate IT to actually be involved across the entirety of the system and have a better feeling to um, for the whole thing. And so a lot of times we can make those those poor relationships um, much easier because we can talk to both sides and you know and help we'll make that work. I think you nailed it, Ross. I mean, and for me, you know, you can we can talk about all the business benefits and everything else. That obviously is a great motivation. You know, if I can drive a better outcome, but to me, it's also about people. And you know, if you can be involved, like you said working with those people, you know, being that bridge based upon connecting that IT and OT is really, really important. The best examples I've seen of where people have really benefited from what we're, we're talking about today is where those barriers are being broken down and people are talking to each other. You know, we're starting to see here in Intel fusions between IT and OT groups now. You don't have the same barriers that you did five years ago. It's transforming. So we're transforming not only the technology and the way that we would be working, but people are transforming as well at the same time. Just think about it from, you know, one of the big challenges in the OT world is getting people to come into the business who understand how to run OT systems, manufacturing floors. You know, they're coming out of school and they're all basically, you know, developers and cloud providers. So we're seeing, you know, breaking those barriers down is becoming so much more beneficial not just to solve a one-off problem, but in terms of their overall challenge as well. And I think you need to take the right approach, working with the people, building relationships and understand, you know, the benefits of OT and IT in that environment. I, as I said, I'm seeing a lot of companies, you know, they, they create almost like a digital transformation office, which leads to an IT, OT workforce. An IT, OT workforce then starts to figure these things out. Now, great if you're a big company, but that's going to start feeding down and translating and where people like Ross come in and, and can work across with Ben and people like Ben as well. So a good answer. Great, great question. Uh, spurred a lot of discussion. Uh, another great question has come in um, from Harinda Paul, and it says, how does this solution compare to off-the-shelf plant floor solutions like Raven AI, Twin Thread, or Tulip? And I I'll start by answering that question in that, I wouldn't say we're coming to the table with a solution. We're, we're coming to the table with, um, well, for one thing, uh, we're, this is with Kepware, this is specific to, to getting industrial data, industrial data connectivity. Um, those applications or those solutions you mentioned, um, they actually partner with Kepware as like a technology partner um, to get the data for them because they don't wanna get bogged down supporting 150 different drivers for all the various types of uh, protocols that exist in this space. Um, so, so that's kind of my answer to that is, is that, uh, you know, those, those solutions might end up being this, you know, being used in what this, what this coalition brings to the table based on, based on the needs of what you're trying to do. Um, does anyone else have a comment for that? Well, this is like kind of what Alan mentioned earlier is these off the shelf solutions are great solutions. I've actually used most of the ones that were mentioned. Um, the problem comes in they aren't designed for your system you have to start making deviations on every one of them whereas we're approaching this in a little more holistic fashion of getting to the maybe a similar end goal 
but it is tailored towards your system because you get into those systems and you look at their base package and it looks really good. Uh, and then you're like, oh, but you have this PLC or you need these other connectors and you want this other report. And well, ours isn't really designed to that. And you have, by the time you get through all the deviations and you're really making a lot of modifications to a stock system that doesn't have to be supported. Um, I'm always I'm all for using stock software and off the shelf software when it makes good sense. Uh, building a new plant sometimes it makes great sense. Uh, going into an existing facility, usually the amount of modifications that have to be done to one of those makes them somewhat unwieldy, which is why you don't see them deployed into existing spaces successfully that often. Uh, and so that's where we're starting from having conversations and determining where you're at and what the end goal is and then making the determination of what you need um, is much better than us coming in and trying to sell you a very specific product. Um, because when you're selling a product, you're very limited to what that product is and you kind of run into the, when you're a ham, you know, when you're a hammer, everything is like a nail situation. I have an experience where, where I've seen both sides of that, right, Ross? I've seen, uh, so I was, I was, Taken from OT, put in IT, um, held the title as ar uh, OT architect. And my job was to be able to, to take the OT data and monetize it, right? Figure out how to kind of how to leverage our data to help the company succeed. And every time we went to do that, we the the ROI would fall in his face as soon as we started talking about data quality talking about we got we got to map the data to make sure it's you know we're getting the right data and it was horrid and we never could get to a place where we could use AI or machine learning and so we we completely changed our philosophy and we said hey we're going to bring in a data scientist and we're going to stick them with our absolute best engineer and we're going to have that data scientist learn what that engineer does day to day and figure out how he can help really automate some of those tasks and everything changed for us because as soon as we started attacking what actually the work and the processes we did everything became very clear right it's like oh you go get this data you do this with the data and then you get this outcome oh let's create an algorithm now you click a button and that just happens for you right it's the same kind of concept Yeah, I've awesome. had the Insight. absolute exact experiences, you know, with that sort of thing. Of you, when you start talking to the operators and the plant managers, a lot of times you get a much different picture than if you're talking to corporate people of like, we need this information. You know, when you're like, you have to actually see how the plant runs, how they operate day to day. It's a lot of times a much different story than what C-suite guys are thinking is running their facility. You know, these plant managers are really good. Plant engineers are really good at making these plants run. And all with you're only seeing is the output of that. You may not know where the biggest leverage points of getting, you know, actionable data from that facility could be. So that's that's an interesting story, Alan. Cool. All right, uh, we have an, one last question, I think, and we're probably going to be up for time. Um, but Chris asks, how do you see unified namespace? Is it just a buzzword, or is it the best practice to build a structured enterprise data hierarchy? That is a great question. And Ross, I'm not sure how familiar you are with unified namespace. If, if you want to comment there, you're, as far as the group members go, you might be the, the best one, but, but if not, that's no problem. And you're muted. If, if I can get myself unmuted. <laughs> so it's, I mean, I, in my opinion, and I'm not the world's most familiar at this, I, I look at it as repackaging in existing ideas of, Let's try to get everything in the same levels. I mean, that's really where, you know, from my understanding of it, um, I'm not going to pretend to know everything on the backside of it, but it, you know, a lot of what the stuff they put out on unified namespace seems like the things that what we've been preaching for a decade or more of, you know, people using standards and getting everything instead of just, you know, it's the islands of automation problem that his uh, plagued plants forever, forever of, you know, you buy 27 OEM skids, you throw them out in your facility and they're just these little, you know, little islands that don't play nice with anything else. Um, and I, that's to me kind of what they're driving at, but you know, like I said, I'm not the um, expert in unified namespace and what they're working with. I could tell Alan might have an opinion. <laughs> I was thinking, I was actually wondering if Jeff wanted to speak mm. on that. I, I have some comments if, um, well, Jeff, if Jeff doesn't. <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, 
Vince? So yeah, you know, it really looks a lot like a driven, event-driven architecture. If you're familiar with that paradigm, I think that that's been for high-frequency data. That's really the uh, the pattern that is most efficient and kind of overcomes some of the challenges that a consistent architecture is used to have problems with. So if you're familiar with like a consistent architecture, things are kind of built around transactions where you send data somewhere and there's a transaction making sure that it's committed somewhere in some database, it's locking something and then it's, success, it's telling you successfully that it's committed that particular transaction. Well, in distributed systems, that creates an enormous problem, uh, particularly around devices that are all over the world. And so things have now moved to what they call an eventually consistent architecture where you basically capture these events. And if you think about like an ATM uh, machine, you may be able to get overdraft and, and maybe that doesn't happen as much today, but back in the day, we could go and overdraft on our ATM machine because it would, it would basically keep a ledger of our, our kind of withdrawals and, and deposits into the bank. And so it would eventually have the right balance because those would essentially uh, 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 become consistent over time because you'd be, you know, making the balance uh, correct as as more transactions come and go. And so uh, that's really what uh, the the kind of enterprise methodology is for high frequency data is to just capture the events and then aggregate them into something else later. And as you look at the unified namespace, that's really what that is is, is capturing those events in a in a way that's logical to your the structure of the data that's coming and going. And so I think with a lot of things in, in, uh, in technology, this is a, a somewhat um, uh, repetitive uh, pattern that we're seeing from other systems. And that makes sense. Yeah, I'll speak on a little bit from my standpoint of being really coming from that space of, right, an operational technology architect trying to drive value from uh, from data. Um, unified namespace really for us is around uh, democratizing our data, right? So you have a single source of truth. And what we wanna do is we want to, we wanna make sure that we are identifying that source of truth. And if at all possible, we want to publish that source of truth into a broker that then can distribute that to whatever, wherever you wanna, to consume it, right? So you have a single source of truth that gets published with its context, with its its engineering units and all the metadata, and then systems can then subscribe to that data. And you're not you're not taking that data and then you know you you have a PLC tag that's going to an HMI tag that's going to an uh, you know a historian tag, and then you got an SAP asset number. You've got the data warehouse has its own tag that's got created, right? We're, we're saying, hey, we wanna have a unified namespace throughout our entire organization. Anytime this data is used, we know that piece of data is the, coming from the source of truth and it's we don't have to go back and map it all out, right? So it's it's about democratizing our data, making sure that it's, it is consistent and, and true anywhere you use it, right? And so, and then, that really comes back to, and I'll hand this over to my partner, Jeff, who can talk about the unified analytics space, which is what we're really starting to try to, uh, to help define. Jeff? Thanks, Tom. Um, you know, Chris, to your point, the UNS, I think, if we're talking about what is the unified namespace, open architecture, lightweight, um, edge driven, uh, report by exception, right? And so who doesn't want that? Uh, there, I don't think there's an organization that wouldn't want that. Um, and so to be able to have an understanding of the now at any point, anywhere in my organization has value. And what is that serving as? That is a functional namespace that is defining our current state. The, what did this, what did this webinar focus on though? This webinar is focusing on taking current state, the now, and doing and doing insightful action off of that, driving driving analytics, getting the now and getting it to a place inside of my enterprise uh, into some type of insight. And so that is where we start to lose the capability, uh, or or maybe I should say we need to further our understanding of what is the UNS. 
that is where we need to be able to move to this concept of defining how we're going to handle our analytics, how we're going to access all of the time series and transactional data that we need in order to put context around the now. That's what Alan referenced with the Unified Analytics Framework. So yes, the UNS is certainly valid, at least in my personal opinion, um, probably as well necessary for organizations to begin to put it as their strategy. Um, but let's be honest, most organizations are still really lacking data maturity. Um, a great point and example, today I was completing a, a, a survey for an organization using our software um, and guess how I was doing that survey? I was filling out a Word document. Where's that Word document gonna live now? Right, why am I not filling out a web form? That all the information I spent 30 minutes putting in that Word document is now a data silo that no one else has access to unless they're that person I email that Word document to. So this is just an, a perfect thought within your own process inside of your world and your organization. What am I doing to contribute to having uh, freely shared and available information inside of my sector that I can control? All right, I've rambled. Thank you. <laughs> no, and uh, I think that we are up the up, you know, top of the hour. Uh, thanks everyone who has stayed on and listened to this. Um, you know, I think it, it is a great discussion and, and, and Jeff and Alan, thank you for being supportive of it. Um, any, anything, Jeff or Alan, you want to run a wrap up? I also want to thank uh, all the members of the coalition uh, <clears throat> for their participation today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Steve. So um, Jeff and Ricky, uh, thank you so much for joining us from Dell and from Intel. Ricky, thank you for the work that you've done to help spur this. Um, and Ross and Ben, it's been a pleasure getting to know both of you and working with you over the last couple of months. Um, look forward to continuing uh, conversations and learning more about the services that both organizations offer. Steve, always a pleasure. We love the Kepware family. Thank you for Kepware's commitment to sponsoring Integrate Live. Um, for our Integrate Live audience and those who are joining us for the first time, come back on August 23rd and 30th. Uh, Kepware is going to be back at the table. We've got InfluxDB, uh, as well as our friends at Software Toolbox and Phoenix Contact, all coming together for a project build out. We, uh, you'll see emails um, here in the next five to six days to the community about what we're going to be building, but uh, we will preview it and say it's going to be in the same venue, right? We're going to be taking data from the edge, getting it to a spot where we can do some analytics and then completing the feedback loop and bringing it back to edge. So, Thank you everybody for attending uh, this recording in the next 24 hours will be on integratelive.com. And of course, uh, as always keep building incredible things and finding open um, ways to do that.